welcome to my channel again homestead in the woods i'm Catherine, and i'm in the barn today and i'm going to be going through the beekeeping supplies that i still have here i don't have beehives anymore and probably not a good idea that i do have them because after a certain number of bee stings i'm now allergic to bee stings so I uh, have to carry an EpiPen and the chances that I ever have bees again are, are probably slim and none. So I'm going to be looking through what I have here and getting it cataloged and taking pictures and I'll explain what I'm finding as I come across it. But I just need to get it all on the first sale of trade and get it out of here because this is a little bit of a rat's nest in here. So stay with me and we'll get to work. didn't get sold off before but they're still here anyway um, these are called frames and I'll get you a close look here so this is just uh, this yellow is plastic and it has no it doesn't um, yeah I take that back it does it has a very very fine uh, like a sprayed on wax to attract the bees to get them to, to want to uh, make a honeycomb in it but these have never been used they were apparently down in a hive because they've got the 2016 dates on them but anyway not used somebody will be able to make use of these and these small uh, depth would go into one of the uh, levels of a hive that would actually store honey whoops and this is one that they had started to make uh, honeycomb on it. And it's, you know, got some damage, of course, now it's been kicking around for a while. I'll try to get this close so you can kind of see how that looked. And it's the same on pretty much on the other side. That is honeycomb that they started to build out and never completed. All right, this is called a bottom board, and this is the board that rests on the very bottom, and then that the high boxes are stacked on top of that. And it has a little uh, bee guard in the front there so that the bees can go in and out, but mice cannot. So I would have attached that when I first used it uh, in the hive, but I don't need it now. So. It's going into the for sale or trade list. So that's our bottom board with mouse, mouse guard. of a, a screen so uh, you if you ca happen to catch a swarm you can get them started in these boxes and you can see I did use it at one point in time there's a little bit of uh, comb that has started on the side so we've caught many swarms but again I'm not in the bee business anymore so they can go. So I've got two swarm catching boxes. And I will be showing you a picture of, well, several pictures of swarms that we caught in the past. Okay. 
Okay, I've got three of these. Ah, there, they're bulky. So, you can see they're hollow all the way through. There's insulation in here, and then it's all covered by plastic. These are called hive cozies or bee cozies, and they fit right down over the top of the hive in the winter time to protect them from the cold and the elements. It does, if I remember correctly, the way it sits, it does allow the bees to still be able to get in and out of the hive on a good day. And so, very effective in helping the bees stay alive for the winter when it's very cold. Um, we did use these on the hive and they did survive very well, unless you get really super frigid. I know we did have some 25 below zero with extreme winds and we did lose hives at that time and even this could not keep up with the intensity of that winter storm. So they can only do so much, but you know, barring any 25 below zero type of weather, these are very, very effective in keeping your, your bees alive during the winter months. So three bee cozies. There's three of this, whatever this is. Okay, I wrote on them. Um, so this is a 10 frame, and, and the boxes, the B boxes are, are usually 10 frame or eight frame, I believe. The 10 frame was the, is the larger boxes. And so this would be a spacer that goes in between each layer of box. You don't have to have it, but I found that my, my bees would create so much glue in between each layer of hive body that it was almost impossible to pull them apart and then the, the honeycomb would all break apart and honey dripping everywhere. So I did find that it made it a little less problematic to separate the uh, hive bodies if I put the spacers in. So I've got three of those. This little tool is made for puncturing the closed cells of honey so that you can then put the, was that it? No, that's not what it's it, but my dog is viciously barking out front so I'm gonna, gonna have to turn the camera off Go see what it's all about, and then I'll come back and explain what this is. Be right back. Okay, I just brought my dog in here with me. She's going to get her treat and go skedaddle somewhere and get out of my way. But no more barking.
Okay. I was just showing you uh, this little tool, and I decided that this is something that I used to embed the wire in wax. I built my own frames most of the time, and so I would combine wire with wax and get it inside the frame. And so that's what this was used, but I am going to look it up just to make sure before I put it on the for sale or trade. So that real thing. some wax down in here but this is wax I, I had to buy wax at time if I didn't have any wax from the hives that I could melt and use this to create new uh, wax for the hives then I have to buy some and melt it down and anyway I would put this on a hot plate and melt it and that's what this is put it together with glue and nails. So, well, this is the front and the back. Okay, so each side and each hand has a little groove in it that you can use to pick up these boxes. When they're full of bees and honey, they are extremely heavy, extremely heavy. And so the way they go together, like I already have holes drilled for this, is they just they just fit in the notches like this. And you, you glue them, and so there would be another two on the side and the back, and that would make one hive body. So I have a full box of these. I think they came in boxes of 10. Okay, so they would have come in a box, a box that had enough pieces to make six hive bodies. So that was pretty good, but it's going to be very heavy, so I'm not going to carry it over here, but I do need to put something together to do the picture. I'm going to turn the camera off for a minute and do a little bit more foraging back here because I'm pretty sure there is going to be some more stuff. Okay, I found a few more things. I found a package of labels that goes on top of the honey. And they say, warning, do not feed to infants under one year of age. So I had to put those on each one of my jars of honey that I sold. And th these four pieces actually make the frames like this, except, yeah, I think those are about the same size. So there, there's a little groove in the bottom of the longer ones, and that's where the frame actually of, of wax or plastic, whatever you're using, where that sits. And these are the sides. Now this one is for a deeper body frame, and this one is for the shorter frame. Like this. So th that's the side pieces. And the way they go together is you've got a top and a, and a bottom, and those hang in the boxes. And the sides go together. They, everything notches together, so it's not like you have to have a bunch of carpentry skills to, to put these things together. 
You can if you want to make them yourself from scratch, but that's not my cup of tea. I was ready to get going on the frame, so. Well, this one's not fitting in for whatever reason. Oh, I know. It needs a different piece. Okay. Sorry about that. Step over the dog now. Okay, I'll show you how these go together. So, this would be the top bar that actually sits inside the hive. Wrong end. So that's the top and it actually hooks on the box. And then this is the bottom. And again, they're both notched on the inside to hold the wax or the plastic, whatever you're using for your base that the bees can build on. Okay, that's, that is what would be a deep frame. And then these are the shallow frames. So usually where the area of the hive where the bees are making new bees, and in, they would make them here in the, the deeper ones, they're not, that's not an area you would ever need to pull honey out of unless of course the bees did start to put it down there, but they usually don't as long as they have enough room in the honey super. And this would go into a box called the Honey Super, and this is where they would actually make the honey. These are a lot lighter when they're filled with honey. I'm gonna be showing you a picture of one of these larger ones that they did make the honey in, and it, that thing was really, really heavy. So I'll be showing you what that looks like, but I would say one of these filled with honey is about 40 pounds, so super, super heavy. So that's what we, anyway, I have a bo big box of these to make the super, the honey super high frames, and then the ones for the brood. The brood is the baby bees that are in embryo stage. And also came across, these are entrance reducers. So the, the bees come and go from little holes at the bottom or in between the, the two uh, in between two levels of the hive. And so you can make it wide for a lot of bees to go through or at a time when maybe mice might be trying to get in or uh, it's winter time and you just want to reduce the amount of cold coming in. You can have either way. take the camera over here because I actually found that we've got a honey extractor. It's something that you hand crank and it, by centrifugal force, it pulls the honey out of the frames and it goes down the side of the extractor down to the bottom where you can Okay, this is the honey extractor that I was talking about. So you can see on the top that there's a crank. It's not uh, screwed down right now, so I can't use the crank, but I will show you just turning by hand what happens inside. And then down below uh, is, well, let me Sorry just about get... that. So here, once all of the honey goes down to the bottom here, then this is a valve that opens up and the honey pours out into wherever you're going to pour it to, which is most likely going to be a bucket that has filters on it to get some of the particulate matter, the wax, and little bits of dead bees and that kind of thing that inevitably will end up in there um, that gets it, it gets it strained. I don't have any of those 
lift, however. So here's looking down into the top of the honey extractor. Now this would be the crank, except it's not screwed in right now, so it won't do it. But you, if I turn it by hand, you can kind of see. And the faster you're able to turn it, the better the honey is at being extracted from the frame and going into the bottom of the extractor. So I'm going to take the lids off here so you can kind of see. So if I had a frame that was full of honey, I'll just kind of show you on the ones that I've already got. And this one, this extractor can do the shallow supers, which is what this is. These are called frames, but they're also called supers. This will take the, the shallow frames, or it will take those uh, larger ones, but you just toss them in there. One on each side. And then when this turns, the I'll just knock the handle off. The centrifugal force sends the honey flying out of the punctured cells out to the side here. It drips down and then is brought out through that valve that I showed you earlier. So that's how honey gets extracted. And anyway, I need to put this on my for sale.